Welcome to Revival Time Hub, the fire shall ever be burning upon the altar, it shall never go out. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says, the shouts of joy and victory shall not depart from the tent of the righteous. Hallelujah. Listen, believers, hear me before you sit down. For the believer, there is no better yesterday. Did you hear what I said? For the believer, not for everyone. And let me define for you what the Bible calls a believer. A believer is not a church goer. A believer is not a Bible holder. A believer is not just one who says amen. A believer is one who has chosen to submit to the authority of Jesus, the authority of the word. For that person, it is impossible to have a better yesterday. And if that person is you, then let me prophesy to you that in the name of Jesus, all through 2024, it will be ever increasing glory, ever increasing glory, fearful results after fearful results. In the name of Jesus Christ. Happy New Year. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Whatever plans to make this New Year sad for you, God has sent me to curse it already. Hear me. The tears of last year will never be repeated this year. Let me say it again to the believer. The tears, secret or open, the tears of last year, the shame of last year, the reproach of last year has no place in your 2024 in the name of Jesus Christ. If the mouth of the Lord has spoken it, then his hand will make it good. You will see wonders this year. It will be clear from your life that it pays to serve Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now together shall we lift our hands to Jesus and ask him to give us a very dramatic encounter tonight within the time that we have. Go ahead, Koinonia Global, Zaria, UK, US, Canada, across the globe. Lift your voices and together as a family of faith, let us thank the giver of all good things, the giver of life, the giver of all grace. You are praying. You are praying. Twenty twenty four exceeding great rewards. The path of the just. Are you tired of praying already? It's too early to be tired. Too early to be tired of speaking. Too early to be tired of making prophetic declarations. We have come to receive, we have come to grow, we have come to rise, we have come that prophecy be made manifest in our lives. In Jesus mighty name we pray. We are still praying Psalm 107 verse 1 to 3. I want us to start tonight by giving God quality thanks quality thanks from a standpoint of revelation oh give thanks unto the lord for he is good and his mercy endureth forever verse 2 let the redeemed of the lord say so whom he had redeemed from the hand of the enemy the bible says he gathered them out of the lands from the east from the west from the north and from the south this is what god has done to us that we left last year and returned this year in spite of the presence of Satan. 
in spite of the presence of wickedness and evil men it is proof that God is faithful can you join me in one minute to say thank you Jesus go ahead and express gratitude from the depth of your heart you are a good God and we honor you you are a good God we celebrate you we worship you you have done all things well do not be silent you have been a good God mention the names of your loved ones and say thank you for their lives go ahead and pray you have been a good God I have searched and searched all the earth searched and searched all the earth and found them I have searched and searched all the earth, searched and searched all the earth, and I found her. Babawani Kamarika. Babawani Kamarika. I have searched and searched all the earth, searched and searched all the earth, and I found that I Sing it from your heart that I have searched and searched all the earth. Father, we want to say thank you. You have been good to us and we choose to pay attention to your goodness and to verbalize our gratitude even tonight. Thank you for Koinonia Global. Thank you for every family here represented. Thank you for every believer here represented. Thank you for your goodness. It is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed because your compassions, they fail not. And tonight we have come expecting to receive, expecting to rise, to grow, to thrive, to excel. We obtain grace tonight, surprise us, meet us above and beyond our expectations. And to Jesus be all the glory. For in Jesus' matchless name we pray. Hallelujah. Please be seated. Please be seated. Very good to see everyone again. This is the hand of God. And we want to say thank you to Jesus. Hallelujah. Every time we gather in his presence, it is because he has prepared for us a feast of fat things. And your portion this year must be delivered to you. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord has spoken by His Spirit that this year, 2024, is a year of exceeding great rewards. Hallelujah. Now, very quickly, um, I'd like you to write, I have by the Spirit four important goals. This is our goal, and it is my goal for you by the Spirit of God before we get into discussing the prophetic word usually the first service of the year is dedicated to do justice 
to the prophetic word so that we run with a word whose revelation we have and um, this is what we'll be doing tonight so the first goal that God has in store for us and this must become our pursuit for every believer who is genuinely connected to this ministry worldwide is number one a deeper knowledge of God and a greater conformity to his nature and character let's start from there the first goal that we have as a ministry this year is a deeper knowledge of God this is my assignment to you this is God's goal this is koinonia's goal it is our commitment to our global family a deeper knowledge of God and greater conformity to his nature and character please write that down a deeper knowledge of God alongside a greater conformity to his nature and character we want to see this year like never before believers who are Christ-like indeed John 17 and verse 3 says this is life eternal that they may know thee the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent Galatians 4 I believe verse 19 Paul was crying from his spirit over the Galatian church and he said my little children of whom I travail in birth again until Christ be formed in you hallelujah so we desire to see believers who are Christ-like in experience even in such a bedeviled world like ours it is possible to be Christ-like the Bible says by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples and he says when you have love one for another and I hope you know what we call the fruit of the Spirit in Galatians chapter 5 so from verse 16 to 22 talks about the works of the flesh the entire discussion is about a contrast between the flesh and the Spirit hallelujah by the time we get to 22 he says now the fruit of the Spirit but the fruit of the Spirit is love joy peace um, King James does not do justice in really articulating what Paul was attempting to say because you see the fruit of the Spirit is not just love joy peace suffering even if you use it like that it's still applicable but the truth contextually the fruit of the Spirit is love are we together then all that you see joy peace long suffering are the expressions of love so love is the nature of God and from that love comes the expression of joy peace patience or long-suffering gentleness goodness faith and then verse 23 um, it says meekness temperance it says against such there is no law so the nature of God in a man is manifested in and through love the love of Christ more than the power of Christ more than the wisdom of Christ the love of Jesus at work in a believer is the signature that God is alive and at work in such a person and so this year God's goal for us as a global family is that we have a deeper knowledge of God and a greater conformity to his nature and character ready for number two the second goal is more superior levels of transformation this is the second goal more superior levels of transformation according to Romans 12 and verse 2 we have experienced transformation all through the years but this year God has a goal for us and it's our goal in righteousness that we will contend through quality life applicable teachings we would get into more superior levels of transformation every one of us here should know by now that the quality of your life spiritually and otherwise is a reflection of your spiritual understanding hallelujah mentality truly defines destiny it is true it is not a cliche it's a fact your mentality your understanding defines the kind and the quality of destiny that is delivered to you hallelujah 
and we come from different backgrounds we come from different experiences and most of us come into the faith life with a backlog of poor negative um, mindsets some may have come from our past some may come from the wounds of yesterday some may come from the kind of upbringing that we had some may come from our failures of the past some will come from our destructive habits of yesterday when we bring this backlog of understandings before god it is the assignment of the holy spirit through the word of god to begin to purify your conscience and purify your thinking it is impossible to have an enviable destiny with a destructive mindset it does not add up it will not happen for as he thinketh in his heart the Bible says, so is he. Are we together? Romans 12 verse 2 says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. It's an action word. It's an action expression. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove by that renewing what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Number three, the third goal that... We have this year is to command notable results yes notable results it is a goal that I have set in righteousness that everyone yet yeah, we minister to the body of Christ by the privilege of God's grace but my emphasis is first to the koinonia global family that God would grant grace this year to command notable results what does that mean divine solutions that bring advancement and rest to your life divine solutions extraordinary solutions this is a highly pro result ministry hallelujah we are very 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 averse to barrenness of any sort because fruitfulness brings glory to the name of the lord john 15:8 Herein is my father glorified. When ye bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. John 15, 16. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain. That whatsoever ye shall ask of the father in my name, he may give it you. God is glorified when we bear fruit. The first instruction that man received at creation was be fruitful. Not just walk around aimlessly, be fruitful. And so Koinonia, I want you to prepare your heart sincerely to experience results. I have told you that results are a consolation to your Christian experience. It matters that you command results. Are we together? It is a waste to camp around anything that does not work. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Results are important in all its ramifications. I'm saying that meaning you must release your faith, release your spirit that my life must be always extraordinary this year. You have clapped for people. It's time for the nations to clap for you as touching what God has done and will be doing in your life. You believe that? Shout a very believing amen. amen. There are people who are seated here quietly but by the time God begins his work in your life, the kind of result you will command, you will be the first person to wonder at the hand of God. Do you believe this? Yeah. Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, results are powerful. It is the end of all arguments. Genuine results. Hallelujah. The performance of the word in a believer's life, it encourages you, it encourages the saints. It draws many to Jesus. It was Charles and Francis Hunter of blessed memory who said, one genuine miracle is worth a thousand words. How true? How true? You can talk about the God that heals. You can preach about the God that heals. You can write books about the God that heals. But one person standing from a wheelchair is an authentic sermon. One person whose life, cancer dies from his life, HIV, fibroid, whatever satanic manipulation leaves that person and he becomes an embodiment of that sermon. Hmm. This is what I believe. You're a man of God here. Let me encourage you. Please go and stay with God this year. 
and say, Lord, do not send me with a salmon alone again. The grace to prakos they did, not just hearing, they heard and they saw. They heard that God is love, they saw that he is love. They heard that God restores, they saw that he restores. That is how the faith work is, that you hear and then you see. May you see everything you hear in the name of Jesus Christ. That if God speaks to you, may your life command that result. So notable results for all believers, especially those connected to this spiritual family, is our goal for this year. Not just a few people. That means a time should come where on Sunday we are at a loss as to who to select to come and testify and who to plead with to sit down until next year or next week because of the volume of testimonies that one person alone will have to say calm down we've had everything just summarize and the person say how do i summarize this this lengthy manifestations of god's faithfulness if you like believe if you don't like don't believe it is unto you this year according to your faith as for me i believe oh i do I truly believe in the name of Jesus. <laughs> and then number four, greater kingdom relevance. Write it down, please. This is the fourth goal this year. So number one, a deeper knowledge of God and greater conformity to his nature and character. Number two, more superior levels of transformation. Number three, that you command notable results in and through your life. And then number four, greater kingdom relevance. What does this mean? Maximum participation in soul winning, maximum participation in the maturity of the saints, maximum participation in birthing revivals across nations, maximum participation in societal transformation. I'll take it again. That this year, God has a goal for us of greater kingdom relevance. I hope you know that when you say a person is relevant in the kingdom, the relevance in the kingdom is not necessarily measured by the presence of carnal things. In as much as they are important, in the world system, we measure relevance based on things like money, um, academic qualifications, you know, whatever status, and those things are wonderful. But when you come into the kingdom, God uses a very different parameter to measure greatness and relevance. The index of soul winning, the index of contributing to the maturity of the saints, the index of sponsoring and birthing revivals across nations, the index of involving yourself in societal transformation, this is how to be relevant in the kingdom. And so God does not just want us to prosper, to do well, you know, to excel as far as our personal lives are concerned. Remember that the entirety of our lives is to project and to reveal Jesus. And so greater kingdom relevance becomes for us the fourth goal what does this mean it then means that you must be willing and available to be used to be sent by god isaiah chapter 6 and verse 8 prophet isaiah said um he said i heard a voice of the lord saying whom shall i send and who will go for us and he said here am i send me most people think when you say send me it means you have to be some missionary in some country or you have to be a man of god traveling from place to place no send me means whatever it is within my power whatever contribution i can make with my life my time my resources my energy to make this kingdom come agenda happen i am ready and i'm willing to listen let me tell you this believers among the many things we must learn is that your life is only useful to the degree to which it advances the purposes of God. Let me repeat again for your understanding. Your life is only useful. Gone are the days where people freelance their lives just trying to make money, 
just trying to marry, have children, just trying to build a house, just trying to go to school. These things are wonderful. But as we step into the heart of what we call the end times, your heart and your passion must be to see that your life becomes a direct participant in God's program. Hallelujah. Yeah. There are many believers who are totally nonchalant as far as God's program is concerned. Theirs is to come and receive from God. God, I need a husband, give it to me. I need a wife, give it to me. I need my car, give it to me. I need prosperity, give it to me. Don't get me wrong. It is God's desire to make us have and experience all these things. I need my promotion, give it to me. I need this and that, give it to me. And then after we say and do all those things, there is nothing in our life that advances the program of God. Who is saved as a result of my life? It's none of my business. Who is healed as a result of my life? None of my business. Who comes to know Jesus as a result of my life? None of my business. What program is being, is happening because I gave? None of my business. All I want is God attend to my need. That is a very immature Christian experience. And I'm trusting that God will win and grow us out of that kind of thinking. Say amen. amen. That the average believer must become very passionate about God's business. God's business is your business. Did you get that? God's business, whatever, whatever commands his attention and his passion must be your business. The worship team sang it beautifully. It says, lo, I come. In the volume of the book, that should be Hebrews 10, 7 or thereabout. As it is written of me to do thy will, not to do my bidding. Nobody has ever carried a car out of this world as a dead man. Nobody has ever carried certificates out of this world. Nobody has ever carried their spouse or their children. Are you listening to me now? Nobody has ever carried achievements. All the applause you receive from men only end here. But there are certain things that are eternal. They transcend beyond this realm. One of such is souls. You immortalize your presence and your impact when you live for Jesus. This is not some church fanatism. This is not just a preacher's discussion. This is an education that helps you to become a wholesome believer. So God is taking away from our life this carnality and this excessive coming to church purely based on receiving things money house you will you will make more money than you've ever made in your life this year that one you can be sure of that it's true you are under a grace that delivers that kind of result you will not but have that result but you see the trouble is when it gets to your heart when it gets to your heart like it has gotten to the heart of many people. Praise the Lord, but worshiping the idol of money and things. Are we together? So it's important for believers to attain that state of maturity in the spirit. Greater kingdom relevance. For me, this was my commitment and my vow to God again. That he should engrace me. Thank God for that which we have done for the kingdom. But that compared to what we are available and ready to do for the kingdom, yesterday's tries are child's play compared to the things we are ready to do this year for the kingdom. Preach like never before. Heal the sick like never before. Cast out devils like never before. Transform the spiritual understanding of God's people like never before. Ward off the arsenals of darkness over families like never before. This was my commitment to God. I said, Lord, anoint me in a way you have never done before. Let the miracle services be fire like never before. Let the teaching sessions be mighty moments of encounter with your word. This is what it means to contend for greater kingdom relevance. Prosperity is good. Physical advancement is good. But i rather be poor to the things of this world and be rich towards God. It's an intelligent bargain. I'd rather not have a car and have a thousand souls every week. Yes, I'd rather not have a name. I'd rather you forget about my name. Remember, I say these things all the time. 
and this this is not just a, a pretentious preacher's talk you have the spirit of god you know when people are making empty noise on stage it's true i will still be discommitted if god did not call me into ministry i don't know any other way to live again sincerely speaking this is the mentality you must have as a believer when god blesses you the first thing that comes to your mind is the kingdom of God there is a portion of this when God lifts you you are thinking Jesus you are thinking kingdom when you get up in the morning you are thanking God for the gift of the day the gift of the morning not just to go and accomplish your lusts and your goals but your entire life is about Jesus you see you will know the value of such living when you become old you will look back and smile at your yesterday because you would have made a wise use of your time versus wasting your life chasing after things that you may never find wasting the precious gift of time for many of us you did not live effectively last year God has given you the gift of 2024 and you must start by firing on all four cylinders for the sake of the gospel are we together yes so when we talk about kingdom relevance in this house, it is beyond just the acquisition of material things. It is beyond just the adorning of earthly glory on you. These things are wonderful. We don't downplay them. But in order of spiritual superiority, souls, transformation, birthing revivals across the nations, seeing to it that our territory comes under the influence of the Christ. This is what it means to be great, and to be relevant in the kingdom. If that will be your experience, shout amen again. Amen. This year we are positioned for many great activities as a ministry. All our koinonia services, by the grace of God, we trust God that there will be very prophetic encounters. It is my commitment and my covenant under God that no service, no gathering in this ministry will be a regular, careless, ill-prepared service where we come and we're disoriented, wasting your time and God's time. No, every meeting, because you see, every service is somebody's last opportunity. Every. This is my mentality. Every time I prepare for service, I prepare for it as though this is someone's last opportunity. Perhaps someone is suffering from cancer and this is his last opportunity to experience the power of God. Perhaps the devil is already planning that someone will not finish this month and this may be his last God would have sent him to Koinonia as the final bailout so that he can experience his life. So I take the business of the ministry of the word and the spirit seriously. And we train the entire workforce to take their job seriously. From the songs, to the prayer, to the testimony, to the word. Everything that makes this service is designed to minister Christ in his fullness to everyone. And this will be your experience. In the name of Jesus Christ. And so all our koinonia services, the miracle services, and all other services, we trust God that this year, 2024, that none of them will be empty and barren of God's wisdom, that none of them will be empty and barren of God's power, that none of them will be empty and barren of transformation. That every time you are sharing the grace, you are sharing the grace with joy or tears of joy or shouts of joy. But not that you are just going home to say, well, I hope that today was blessed. No. In the name of Jesus Christ, it is our commitment under God to see that your stay for each week and every time will be worth the while. The wisdom that will come upon you in one service will be equivalent to all that you have achieved in 10 years. One service, wisdom coming with fire from the throne. In the name of Jesus. And then of course, I will do justice to that by next week. But just to know that all of our apostolic conferences that we have, the Sound of Revival, UK, US, Canada. I mean, it's incredible what God has in store for us this year. And we really rejoice. We've been walking behind the scenes and God has given us the grace to do all that we've done. All that needs to be secured is secured and we're almost done and ready to reveal Jesus at a dimension that we are hoping and trusting that will really, really bring him grace. Hallelujah.
And so we'll do the announcement officially next week at the miracle service um, for the month of January. We'll be announcing very specifically all of those dates, but the sound of revival has really come to stay across the nations and we're trusting God for a mighty move to make our contribution as far as the revelation of Jesus to the nations is concerned. And um, by God's grace, we trust God this year to have many empowerment programs like we have always done, but in greater measures. The church is the light of the world. Do you believe that? And the salt of the earth. It is impossible to be in a city and a territory and your impact is not known. And your impact should not just be known by believers alone. Unbelievers must attest to the fact that this is, even if they do not acknowledge the God that you worship, they must acknowledge the value that comes from that fellowship. This is what empowerment is about. Transformation. And by God's grace, we will not fail to do our bid as far as helping to make a better society is concerned. We will give where we need to give as much as we can give. We will help where we need to help, rehabilitate where we need to rehabilitate, help people to live meaningful and useful lives by the grace of God. Hallelujah. And by the grace of God, this year, we are going to be having our own Koinonia Conference. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes, it's going to be, believe me when I tell you, you have not had an experience like what you are about to see. Hallelujah. It's going to be a global convergence of all the Koinonia Global Family who are going to be converging. It's going to be an extraordinary moment of fire, of power, of revival. Hallelujah. Are you excited already? What is your role in all of this? Number one, pray like never before. Pray like never before that the purposes of God as revealed to us that it will come to pass. Pray like never before. Clapping is wonderful but not enough. Shouting is wonderful but not enough. What you are hearing, Satan is also hearing. He was there when God delivered it from the realm of the spirit. He is aware that by reason of disobedience, souls will be saved. By reason of disobedience, life will be transformed. He said, I desire to come to you again, even I, Paul, once and again, but Satan hindered us. And so we must pray. You have been taught extensively in this house the value of prayer, particularly the intercessory value of prayer. Ezekiel 22 and verse 30, it says, And I sought for a man, I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it, but I found none. In this case, God has an army of willing people ready to pray his program. If, if you are part of that army, shout a believing amen. amen. What is your next assignment? Give generously. Give generously. Give with understanding. Give with revelation. Hallelujah. The giving of the saints has always been one of the principal channels by which God finances his program. It is not limited to the giving of the saints alone, but according to scripture, God always gives believers an opportunity through their resources to participate in his program. And it will not be any different with us. Give generously by revelation. I am convinced that a believer who does not give with understanding is not a serious believer. We give primarily because we love Jesus. We give because we want to see his kingdom come. But I tell you, we give because it is an ordinance that brings all kinds of increase to believers. It will never change. Only a foolish farmer will stand in front of a farm and hope that a bumper harvest just happens. No, the earth is connected to the law of seed time and harvest. Genesis 8, 22, it says, as far as the earth remains, the earth still remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease. The problem with giving becomes, when it becomes a purely carnal and mundane bargain, where the entire intent of giving is transactional, and all that believers try to do is to manipulate the hand of God through their seed 
akin to a money doubler. That is where your, the entire philosophy that governs that kind of giving is wrong. But with proper kingdom understanding and as a responsible commitment for the saints, absolutely. I have given this ministry, is a giving ministry, and if you are truly part of this vision, every part of you must participate. And we don't have the time to play games and manipulate people with giving. We are too matured for that kind of childish approach. If you have been part of this vision, we love Jesus too much. It is an unnecessary burden to manipulate people to say give for this and that. We are, we are governed by a higher kingdom philosophy that we love Jesus. We have understood him enough to know that when we give, we give in joy, we give with understanding. But we also give expecting that the rewarder will reward us. Are we together? So, it's important for you to understand this. That you participate by your prayer, your generous giving. Number two, number three, your full participation. This is a third way to connect to what God is doing. I hope we're still following in light of all that God is said to do in our lives, our response is that we pray, our response is that we give generously, our response is your full participation. Half-hearted participation does not lead to glory. Now, this should be the year that you obtain grace from God to settle down and grow fully. One leg in, one leg out will always leave believers in disappointment. There are many people who are conditional Christians, circumstantial Christians. When they hear that something great and wonderful is happening, perhaps a miracle service, perhaps some program, then they come. Mm -mm. They that be planted. I hope you know because a seed is on the ground does not mean it is planted. If you study agriculture, planting is not throwing a seed on the ground. Planting is digging up the earth, putting the seed down, covering it, you seem to constrain the seed to remain in one position. The power of that seed releasing the life in it, it's in its remaining. Are we together? They that be planted, not they that roam around the house of God. They that be planted in the house of God. The Bible says they shall flourish in the courts of our God. Verse 14. The Bible says they shall still bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat and flourishing. What is the secret? They are being planted. Very important. So your full kingdom participation. What is your final role? In gathering and invitations. Listen, let me tell you this. The only way that those who need God will know he's ready to help them is when the saints become an extension of God's voice. When the saints become an extension of God's hand in gathering and invitations. It is important for believers to let many other potential believers know that God is at work and that they can experience salvation, they can experience healing. Publicity is not in gathering. Publicity creates awareness. In gathering is an intentional process by which you bring many to the fold to experience Jesus and to be established in righteousness. There are many believers who publicize church activities, with all due respect, publicize ministry activities, but they have not been taught the revelation of ingathering. You want to understand ingathering? You have to understand what the woman did at the well. The Bible says when she encountered Jesus, she left her pot, left everything, and she ran. And she did not just tell them, I know about a man called Jesus. She said, come see. Come see a man that told me everything I've done. Come see a man. When the feast was prepared, the Bible says that Jesus told them in the parable that they should go and compel the people. It's the Greek word anakazo. It doesn't mean to force. It doesn't mean to manipulate. To give them a reason to come and experience Jesus. You should never come to church 
and then leave so many unbelievers that you know. Someone, perhaps you were even counseling with someone and the person tells you, my whole life has been in shambles. This year already is, is, is a disaster. It looks like this year will be like last year. And you just look at your time and say, well, I feel sorry for you. I'm sure that God will do something about your situation. I need to run to church. And then you run and leave such a person. No. And then while you are in church, everything you are hearing is solving that person's problem. And you keep wishing in church, ah, I wish this person were here. Oh, no. That is not responsible Christianity. Are we together? For the promise is unto you and to your children, your children's children, as many as are far off, even those that the Lord himself will call. Everything you have experienced in this house was not designed for you alone. It's a feast of fat things. No matter how much you eat, you cannot finish everything alone because it flows from the fountain of his presence and his wisdom. It is important. This is beyond church growth. Listen, there is a stage you get to a ministry where the pressure to prove a point dies. Everything to be proven, God would have proven it. Are we together? God has honored this ministry globally. So the, the idea of doing things just for a name is already gone. God has given a name. God has placed his hand upon our lives beyond any shadow of doubt. If all that we're doing was for self, we probably would have taken a break by now. But for Jesus, no, this is only the beginning. In the name of Jesus Christ. So you have a commitment this year to number one, I repeat again, pray. Pray. Pray for me. Pray for the leadership in this ministry. Pray for every department. Don't just come to church. Pray. You can join the prayer department every Tuesday as they pray. You can join. There is no crime in joining to pray. You see a group of believers praying while service is going. Is it alright if I join just to say a word? If they do allow you, that's fine. If they don't allow you, you sit down and you are praying. Father, as the word comes tonight, anoint your servant. Let the word of God come with power. Let there be no distraction. You will think that you are wasting your time. Is this not the year God has chosen to reward you? We'll be getting to the prophetic word shortly. But this, this is just a very important housekeeping that must be done. So you pray. Then you give generously. Honestly, let me tell you this. When believers do not give, um, it is a very dangerous training. Any training that stops you from giving is destroying you. Any training that makes you give just to get is also destroying you. Any training that is all about self is destroying you. There has to be a balanced understanding. But if you do not give, I am sorry to tell you, you will not rise. Not financially. Not in this kingdom. Hallelujah. It's one thing to teach theory. It's another thing to be an embodiment of the things you are communicating. By the privilege and the mercy of God's grace, it was given together with the wisdom of God, wrapped up with God's mercy that has brought this ministry where we are today. Are we together? So your full participation as a worker. I told you, let me repeat myself again. There are no fans in this ministry. That fan mentality is not in the Bible. There are sports fans. There are fans of musicians. There are people who generally admire celebrities from afar. The business of the kingdom is greater and, and um, more important than that. In Koinonia, there are no fans. There are believers governed by understanding, connected by covenant. Are we together? Intentional about seeing the glory of Jesus revealed in their lives and to the nations. So for everyone connecting by way of television, connecting by way of internet, our global family, and all who are part of this, and even the body of believers who connect with and follow what we do, you must take away a fan mentality. Fans have no inheritance. Are we together now? Yes. You receive by faith. I'm connected to this vision, connected with understanding. Everything that comes from God flows to me by the power of connection. I gave an instance last year sometime while I was teaching, if you recall, that when you go to take a shower, 
the various parts of your body don't contend to be the ones closest to the shower because as it flows from the head, all the various parts of the bodies need to do is just to stay where they are. And you have a good bath. Am I right? By the time the leg becomes impatient and he says, I'm going to find a way of rising above the head so that I can receive that, the whole person dies. It's amazing that every part of your body, including your feet, will enjoy a good bath. Why? Because of the power of connection. The Bible says, how good and pleasant it is, Psalm 133, when brethren dwell together in unity. It is like the oil, verse 2 says, that comes, the ointment that comes upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, that went down to his skirts, the skirts of his garment, verse 3. The Bible says, as the dew of Hammon that descended upon the mountains of Zion, for there, in that state, the Lord had commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. So there are certain things you only enjoy when you are connected to the larger family of believers. Hallelujah. Is it alright if you lay your hands on your head in one minute and pray for grace to participate this fourfold participation before we get into discussing the prophetic word. Go ahead and pray. Father, I obtain grace to pray that I become an intercessor indeed. I obtain grace to give, to give generously without coercion void of manipulation I receive grace to fully participate in every activity that represents your name in this house I participate in the ministry of in gathering inviting as many the wounded the broken sinners the lost to experience Jesus in all his dimensions I will not be silent I will use my influence. I will use my resources. I will use the anointing you have given me. Everything you have given me that can serve you will serve you this year. My voice will serve you. My finances will serve you. My car will serve you. My health will serve you. My qualifications will serve you. Everything you have given me must serve your purposes this year. In Jesus mighty name we pray one of the ways you make anything God gave you valuable in your life is to use it to serve him everything God gave you becomes infinitely valuable when it serves Jesus if God gives you beauty and that beauty is serving Jesus that beauty becomes glorious if God gives you finances and that finances is serving Jesus, it becomes glorious. Nothing carries glory in itself. The glory of anything is truly derived with respect to how it is used to serve Jesus. God gives you a beautiful voice like our worship team people and you use your voice to raise sounds of worship to the nations. You bring songs that become ladders of revival. You are serving God. Now your voice becomes valuable. God gives you a position, whether a political position, a position by reason of influence and whatever it is, if that position can serve Jesus, then serve your nation, it becomes valuable. It is mundane to keep anything hoping that by serving itself, it will be valuable. No. Imagine a tree that produces mango only to eat everything by itself. Imagine an orange tree that produces oranges everywhere and then no one is allowed to partake of that orange. The tree eats everything itself. Are we together? Imagine a corn stalk that grows corn and then it eats it again. It doesn't happen that way. Everything finds its relevance by serving a cause that is greater than itself. So you must serve. Use everything God gives you to serve. Serve him in prayer. Serve him as you give. Serve him with your time, your energy, your presence. Serve him by bringing many to experience Jesus. And the Lord will help you as you do that in Jesus' name. Now let's go to the prophetic word. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The Lord spoke to us this year 
it is customary for us as a ministry to receive by the Spirit prophetic words that guide us as a global family. I did note last year that not everyone in the body of Christ necessarily believes in the concept of yearly prophetic words, and that's all right. But for us as a family of faith, it has been a pattern that God gave us, and it's been a pattern that we have kept for many years. It is also part of the secrets behind the constructive growth and advancement that God has provided for us as a ministry. Um, he's chosen to lead us by giving us yearly prophetic words. Let me say a few words about prophetic words. Number one, prophetic words describe and define God's emphasis to his people per season and per time. I'll take it again. Prophetic words, generally speaking, they describe and they define God's emphasis to his people per season, per time. That means when God brings prophetic words, what he's trying to do, the intent behind prophetic words is to describe and then to define God's emphasis to his people in every season. God is always working, but he's not doing the same thing. Are we together? God is always working. He's always at work, but he's not doing the same thing. So prophetic words help us to tap by the Spirit into the mind of God to know and understand his emphasis for every season and for every time. Number two. Prophetic words help God's people to understand what God desires to do and to release their faith to make it manifest in their lives. I'll take it again. The second reason why we believe in prophetic words is that they help God's people to understand what he desires to do. Prophetic words help God's people to understand what he desires to do and then to release their faith to make it manifest. This is the second reason why we need prophetic words. Remember that the words that bless are sent words. Psalm 107, I believe, verse 20, the Bible says he sent forth his word. Not he gave his word. Not we found his word. He sent his word. The word that heals, the word that delivers, the word that delivers men from calamity is a sent word. So when it comes as a prophetic word, number one, it reveals to you what God wants to do, his area of emphasis. And then number two, it helps you to know God's desire for you and then helps you to release your faith so that you can make it manifest. This is the intent behind giving yearly prophetic words. It is not a ritual. If God does not give any prophetic word for the year, we follow through with what he said in the last year and we continue. And I hope you know that just being aware, as you'll be learning now, that God has spoken does not mean it will happen in your life. The reason why I take out time every first service to discuss the prophetic word is so that I can show us how to connect to that word and make it a reality, to make prophecy manifest in your life. Hallelujah. So God has spoken by his spirit that for us as a global family, this is the year of exceeding great rewards. It's a very powerful word, very potent and powerful word. It's come by the spirit. It is of the spirit. It's not just a figment of man's imagination. Let me tell you that these words do not just come out of um, sleeping and rolling around and opening the Bible to say, okay, last year, what was last year's word? Uh, what looks like today? No, 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 no. These things come from moments of prayer and fasting, deep moments with the Spirit, and they are received confirmations and verifications come before these words are finally released to his people. So you can trust what you are hearing. Let's examine a few scriptures now. Genesis 15 and verse 1. Amplified, please. I want us to consider the scriptures that build these prophetic words. 
The Lord is speaking to Abraham now in Genesis chapter 15 and verse 1. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision saying, Fear not, Abraham, I am your shield and your abundant compensation and your reward shall be exceedingly great. KJV will say, God came to Abraham and said, I am your exceeding great reward. Can I tell you, the greatest gift that God can give a man is himself. When God gives you the gift of himself, everything he is and everything he can do follows you as a side effect. When God really wants to bless men, he does not give them things. He gives them the gift of himself. So he comes to Abraham and says, Abraham, I'm not just giving you things. I, I am your exceeding great reward. And the Bible says in Galatians chapter 3 and verse 29, it says, if ye be Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. What does that mean? That what God told Abraham, are we together now? That reality has been routed to the believer today through Christ. I am your exceeding great reward. Can we consider other scriptures? Ruth chapter 2 and verse 12. Ruth chapter 2 and verse 12. It says, the Lord recompense thy work and a full reward be given thee of the Lord God of Israel under whose wings thou hast come to trust. This was a blessing. The Lord recompense your work. So God, recompense means may the Lord, it's, it's like a word compensate, really. May the Lord compensate you, he's saying. May the Lord bring a full reward for the things that you have done. And let me prophesy that to someone in the name of Jesus. Your secret prayers, your secret givings, your service to God and to men, whether seen or unseen, in this season, may my God, since he has spoken, may my God reward you greatly. Yeah. Hallelujah. Malachi chapter 3. This is a very powerful scripture from verse 14 to 18. We'll read from Amplified. I'd like us to read verse 14 together, then I'll continue um, by myself. Are you ready? One to read. You have said it is useless to serve God. And what profit is it if we keep his ordinances and walk gloomily as if in mourning apparel before the Lord of hosts. I continue now to 18, 15 now. And now we consider the proud and the arrogant to be happy and favored. Are you understanding the discussion? Evil doers are exalted and they prosper. Yes. And when they test God, they seem to escape unpunished. 16. Then those who feared the Lord talked often one to another and the Lord listened and heard it. This was a complaint from righteous people to say, Lord, why does these kinds of things continue? It looks like there is no reward serving you. The Bible says the Lord listened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him of those who reverenced and worshipfully feared the Lord and who thought on his name. 17. The Bible says, and they shall be mine, says the Lord of hosts, in that day when I shall publicly recognize and openly declare them to be my jewels my special possession, my peculiar treasure. It says, and I will spare them as a man spared his own son who served him. Not the son he gave birth to, the son who serves him. It says, then as a result of what will happen in their life, shall you return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between him who serves God and him who does not serve him. I'm telling you, believe me, this is the year where there will be a clear demarcation. There will be a clear difference between those who serve God and those who do not serve God. I believe it. There are families who have served God for years. Some of you, your parents served God till they died. I tell you, the rewarder is coming to you. Yeah. One of these days, you will hear a spiritual knock on your door. 
you will open it thinking it's a demon and you will see God show up and says for your faithfulness of 10 years for your secret prayers for Joshua Selman I'm saying this by the spirit for giving nobody saw you but you gave on account of your faithfulness serving the Lord it looks like you are marking time right now I have come to reward you you believe what I'm saying I was teaching last year and I said we have very sophisticated mail systems across the world now there's FedEx there's UPS uh, UP uh, um, the S and then one, one other one which other one again DHL and sometimes those guys are so they, they know how to find your house provided your house is on earth are we together now if it's in another planet that's fine they may find another but if your house is on earth you will be surprised it may take a while, but eventually you will see them knock at your door and say, are you so, so, and so, I have a parcel for you. And you open it and see that that parcel came from Russia, came from Australia, and you are wondering all of that distance. It's none of your business how they transported it to reach you. The most important thing is if it is your name there, you receive it with thanksgiving. Do you believe that? I prophesy to you in the name that is above all names, may my God, who is your God, bring your reward to reach you this year. Yeah. Hallelujah. Now hear me. The Bible says once upon a time, there was a man who was on his way going. And then armed robbers attacked that man on the way. They beat that man and left him for dead. Only God knows what treasures that man was carrying, but he was attacked. I decree and declare, everything that wants to attack the arrival of your rewards, in the name of Jesus Christ who died and rose again, they are cursed even before arrival. Listen, this is not a year to be careless with prophetic words. No, receive it with understanding. Please be seated. Hallelujah. A clear demarcation. In Matthew 25 and verse 21, Matthew 25, 21, the Bible says Jesus himself was teaching. Remember the parable? The parable of the talents. So when he came to demand accountability from those he had given talents, five, two, and one, the Bible says his Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. Look at the character on how God rewards. I will make thee ruler over many things. Few things. Many things. Few things. So God does not just reward with himself. He rewards with things. Few things like little money. Many things like increases, financial increases. Few things like maybe whatever it is. And then many things. God rewards with things. I will make thee ruler over many things. It says, enter thou into the joy of the Lord. I'm praying for you. Whatever is needed for life and godliness. I know you have loved the Lord. Some of you love the Lord in lack. You love the Lord in pain. But whatever provision must be in place for you to enjoy God this year, may my God gravitate it towards you. If giving you your own house will give you the peace to serve God this year, may the rewarder reward you with it. If giving you a greater job will be what will help you serve God well, may my God make it happen for you this year. If entering your marital destiny or having your children are we together or blessing your spouse? Anything around your family life is what will make you serve God well. May my God make it happen this year. And if money is what will help you serve God well, that this, this trauma of lack and telling lies and stealing and living a false life because of the absence of economic means 
If having resources will help you walk in integrity to stop lying and manipulating people, in the name of Jesus, may my God make it happen for you. Please be seated. First Corinthians fifteen fifty eight. First Corinthians fifteen fifty eight. Hallelujah. I sense such a strong anointing. This is how I felt when I was having my retreat. I'm having that same feeling now as I'm standing here. Hmm. Believe in the power of God. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Believe in the power of God. We are not noisemakers. We don't speak empty words. We speak by the Spirit. I know when that glory descends. You see, one of the blessings of the secret place is you can learn the atmosphere of heaven and you know God is always there but he reveals himself dimensionally. And in honor to his word, there are several weights of his presence and glory that is revealed. There are things you talk about that certain weights of his glory just descends to confirm that word. Hallelujah. This is very powerful. Because you will be learning that just hearing an empty word does not bless you. There is the grace component that follows every word. That is what empowers you to become. Just hearing, no. If I teach on faith, there is the grace that impacts faith. It's called the spirit of faith. It comes by the hearing of faith. You cannot receive the spirit of faith without the hearing of faith. <laughs> Hallelujah. Jehovah Jireh, my provider, his grace is sufficient for me. Jehovah Jireh, my provider, his grace is sufficient for me. My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory. Jehovah Jireh cares for me. Jehovah Jireh cares for me. Jehovah Jireh cares for me. Let me show you a scripture. First Corinthians 15 58. Just prepare your spirit to receive a mighty baptism shortly. Therefore, my beloved brethren, he's not speaking to everybody. Please play the strings for me, Binga. Be ye steadfast. Listen. Unmovable. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. He's encouraging discouraged people here. People who have been serving with nothing to show about. Or nothing to show. And he says, be ye steadfast. Unmovable. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. What is the revelation behind that? For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain if it is done in the Lord. If your labor is out of eye service, you will keep doing our service forever. 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 Please just hold those. I'm seeing light now. This is light. Just resting on people. It's an impartation. Light. I've come in the volume of the book It was written about me To do your will, O oh God I've come in the volume of the book it was written about me to do your will, oh God. I've come.
Come in the volume, come in the volume of the book. It was written about me to do your will, oh God. I've come in the volume, I've come in the volume of the book. It was written about me to do your will, oh God. So no matter what I may come my way I'll follow I'll follow I'll follow I'll follow no matter whatever may come rewards God rewards the Bible says be steadfast unmovable abounding in the work of the Lord knowing that you will receive a reward from the Lord if your labor is in the Lord if your labor is in Christ if your prayers if your prayers for your children your prayers for your spouse your giving for souls if it is true that you are doing it in the Lord my Bible says there is a reward. My Bible says there is a reward. Listen, please sit down. Sit down. I want you to be very sensitive. Sit down. Can I tell you? Do you know how God rewards? There are rewards that will come to you whose the harvest of seeds you cannot remember sowing is because someone connected to you sowed it but the person is no more but since god is just he will have to look for someone from that bloodline to and prove his faithfulness i'm saying this because there are many of you your loved ones are dead but they serve god they gave to the work of the kingdom you will marvel and wonder that god will look for you since you did not sow but because you are part of the natural descent of those people God will visit you with anointings, visit you with prosperity, visit you with graces in the name of Jesus Christ. It is true. Listen, it's not only causes that are transgenerational. Blessings are transgenerational. He's called the God of Isaac. The God of, of um, the God of Isaac Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. There is a reason why he's called that way. Do you believe what you are hearing? Ah, look, when I begin to speak these prophetic words, open your spirit and receive and watch the God who rewards men. And watch the God who wipes tears. And watch the God who takes away shame. And watch the God who can end reproach in the life of people. Come on, turn this revelation to prayer in one minute. Oh, you will reward, you will reward. You are a God who does not fail. You will reward to the third and fourth generation. You will reward. Reward with power. Reward with good things. Reward with your presence. In Jesus name we pray. In Jesus name we pray. Please be seated very quickly. Please be seated. I've taught you here that God rewards men. It's a revelation you must have. God rewards men. Settle it for a fact. Beyond any shadow of, of, of doubt, God rewards men. 
God rewards men. What does God reward men for? I've shared it here time and time again, perhaps to recap for your understanding. Number one, God rewards diligent pursuit. When people seek God truly, he rewards them. Most of us approach God with a salary mentality. So at the end of the month, you say, God, where is my reward? That's not how it works. Sometimes for five years, you will not see him speak. Two years, you will not see him speak. But my goodness, the day he comes, he comes to reward you in a way that it becomes clear. He makes a statement in rewarding you. God rewards diligent pursuit. Hebrews 11 verse 6. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must come believing that he exists and then that he is the rewarder, not of Christians, of them that diligently seek him. What does God reward? God rewards faithfulness. Faithfulness. Consistency regardless the consequences. God rewards it. You would have been a multi-millionaire right now if you compromised. But your integrity has kept you in this state. Find hope. The rewarder is coming. Oh yes, the works of men are written in heaven. God rewards. God rewards faithfulness. Listen, there are precious workers in this ministry, I tell you. From as early as five or six, they are up and doing, running around, stretching themselves from pillar to post. If you were God, will you leave them like that? My dear people, sit back and watch the God who rewards, reward you this year. You need to come and watch the prayer department on Tuesday. And you see these people travail from children to grandmothers, crying in the name of the Lord. How does God forget this kind of thing? How about those who give silently, not wanting to be known? They do it because they love Jesus. Hallelujah. Sometimes you see our precious ushers holding people here under the anointing and sometimes you see them fall. Some of them are wounded. All kinds of things, yet you see them laughing with joy. They are not fools. Anybody who makes you believe serving Jesus is foolishness. You don't need to answer. Allow God himself who designed the system reward you in a way that people can say, wow, this is serious. So this is how God can reward those who serve him. Hallelujah. There are some of you serving God has almost become a shame and a mockery. When it's time to go to church, yet come the naysayers, you are going again. They will deceive you, take away your money, indoctrinate you and send you back as a foolish person. And you feel guilty loving Jesus. Oh goodness. Except you do not know the God of the Bible. This is the year that you will arise in power and it will surprise you beyond your imagination. God rewards diligent pursuit. God rewards faithfulness. God rewards sacrifice. God rewards the motif of men. You see, you can do a lot of good things like you have learned. If it is with a corrupted heart, you will not get your reward. For instance, eye service. You know what we call eye service? Doing good things just so that you can have a good name. So that you can preserve your reputation before men. Oh dear. You already have your reward. The perception you are struggling to give them is your own reward. But if from the depth of your heart, loving and serving Jesus, I want to tell you that God rewards the sincerity of men's hearts. Hallelujah. The sincerity of men's hearts. Now, write this down. What is the prophetic implication of this year's prophetic word? You write this now and we begin to rain these prophetic blessings on you. What is the implication? There are four implications to this prophetic word. When God says it is our year of exceeding great rewards. Number one, it means it is a year of great consolation for those who have given themselves to live for and serve the Lord. Let me take it again. The first implication of this prophetic word is that number one, it means that this is a year of great consolation for those who have given themselves to live for and to serve the Lord. A year of great consolation 
for those who have given themselves to live for and to serve the Lord. A year of great consolation for those who have given themselves to live for and to serve the Lord. It is going to be a great time of reward for faithfulness and consistency. Still buttressing on that point. That is the summary of all I just said. A great consolation for those who have given themselves to live for and to serve the Lord. That you have served the Lord faithfully. You have served the Lord consistently. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 10. The Bible says God is not unrighteous. God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love which ye have showed towards his name in that ye have ministered to the saints and do minister. That means if God forgets you, it is unrighteousness on his part. And the Bible says God is not unrighteous. What is the first implication of the prophetic word? That it is a year of consolation for me. It is a year where God rewards faithfulness. God rewards consistency. Ready for number two? What is the second implication of this prophetic word? It is a season where God will bring the mockery and shame of many believers to a glorious end. It is a season, please write, where God will bring the mockery and the shame of many believers to a glorious end. Underline mockery, underline shame, underline believers, underline glorious end. It is a season where God himself will bring the mockery and the shame of many believers to a glorious end. We read earlier from Malachi chapter 3, 14 to 18 that there were people who were shouting in frustration and saying, does it really pay to serve Jesus? Does it pay to come to church? Does it pay to love him? Does it pay to live for him? Does it pay to walk in righteousness? Does it pay to walk in integrity? Does it pay to be a Christian indeed? This is a season where God will bring the mockery and the shame of many believers to a glorious end. Remember that there were many believers who were mocked in scripture. Noah was one of them. Whilst he was focusing his entire life, building the ark of three stories made of gopher wood, people mocked him, mocked his wife, mocked the sons, mocked their wives, but he was not under pressure. He kept quiet and continued doing what he was doing. When it was time for the flood, the Bible said it was God himself who shut the door and the heavens gave its rain, the earth gave its rain, everything in between aside from the ark perished. Apostle, but people have laughed at me. They have mocked me. Don't worry, find rest. The Bible says, whatever you do to the least of my brethren, you have done it unto me. And so God will arise himself. And in this season, he will bring to end every mockery and every shame. And he will bring it to an end gloriously. There have been many glorious endings in the Bible. Let me list four of them for you. Are you ready? Number one. Abraham and Sarah for over 25 years they waited for a son ladies and gentlemen 25 years is a long time no matter how long you live that is a serious slice of your life and yet with the arrival of Isaac that covenant son God had done the life of Abraham and today whether it is Christianity Islam or Judaism Abraham is honored and respected as a father of faith. In thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Mockery and shame. Are we together? Let me give you one other example. How about the man called Gideon? The Bible says he was from the least in his father's house and his father's tribe was the least and they were hiding when God came to him and challenged him that he was a mighty man of valor and he went single-handedly together with 300 others, defeated the Midianites, and made a name for the Lord through his life. Another example of mockery and shame. How about the woman called Ruth? When you read the story of Ruth, it's a very, very touching story. Because the Bible talks about a woman who was a righteous woman. 
and then something tragic it was a tragic season in her life all the men in her life started dying dying mysteriously her husband died her children died and the only person who was there to comfort her was Naomi her mother-in-law hallelujah yes and Naomi herself was widowed she was sad you know and all of those I mean she felt sad and and you know she told Ruth and Oprah, I say, you people should just go and leave me. Just leave me. My life is an, an epitome of shame and reproach. Will I have other sons and have them grow for you people to now have husbands? Just go. And Oprah went her way and Ruth stayed and said, I'm not going anywhere. Your God will be my God. Your people will be my people. Are we together now? And as a result of that, you would think that was the end of Ruth's life. That was only scene one. By the end of Ruth's life, to cut the long short story short, she now became married to Boaz and she now became part of those who were in the lineage, the genealogy of Jesus, the later part of her life. Very powerful, isn't it? That God is able to take reproach and shame. Perhaps the biggest of such was the man Job. Job. The Bible talks about a man who feared God and eschewed evil. Then the Bible tells us that tragedy struck in this man's life. Back to back, everything he had was lost. His children, sons, daughters, estates, cattle, everything. And then to make matters worse, his health now came. Join the list of all the things he had lost. To a point that the wife was discouraged and said, Why do you hold on to your integrity? She said, Curse God and die. And then the Bible tells us in a very beautiful and glorious way in Job chapter 42, when you read from verse 10 and 11 downwards, the Bible tells us that, and the Lord restored, I like this, the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends and the Lord gave Job twice. This is the, the, the expression of glory. Twice as much as he had before. And then... The Bible now starts to list a lot of things. He had sons again, daughters again, estates again. Everything he lost, literally, the Lord gave him twice. So the meaning of this is that everything that looks like shame and mockery in your life, in the name of Jesus, this is the year you will watch it die permanently. You will watch it die permanently. But it will not just end like that. It will end in praise and it will end in glory. Did you hear what I said? It will end in praise and it will end in glory. Listen, there are testimonies you are going to be hearing this year that whilst you are seated, no, no matter how hardened you are, tears of joy will come out of your eyes because there will be representations of God's restoring power, lifting power. That the things God is going to be doing in the lives of people, you will marvel and wonder. I know that God can change people's story, but you mean he can go this far? Hallelujah. This is the God that we believe is working with us this year in a very supernatural way. Number three, what is the prophetic implication or what is the implication of this prophetic word? Are you ready? So number one is a year of great consolation for those who have given themselves to live for and to serve the Lord. Rewarding their faithfulness and their consistency. Number two, it is a season where God will bring the mockery and the shame of many believers to a glorious end. Number three, listen carefully to this. It is a season where God himself will judge and recompense the wicked and they that delight in evil against the saints. This is what God put in my heart. That it is not only a season of glory for the saints, it is a season where God himself will judge and recompense the wicked and all they that delight in evil against the saints. It is a season. This is the implication of being in a year of exceeding great rewards. It is a season where God himself will judge and recompense the wicked and they that delight in evil against the saints. I want to show you a very powerful scripture. There is something in the Bible called the reward of the wicked. 
Psalm 91 verse 8. The reward. The word reward does not just mean a gift. It means consequences. It means a harvest. Psalm 91 verse 8. Please give it to us. The Bible says, Only with your eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. So it's not only the righteous that will be rewarded. The wicked will also be rewarded. Anybody who will not give you rest this year, God himself will arise in his vengeance and jealousy and bring those calamities to end. In the name of Jesus. Carry your Bible and read how God rewarded wicked people from Pharaoh to Nebuchadnezzar to Herod to the armies of Egypt God rewards the wicked he does not reward the wicked by giving them gifts he rewards the wicked by bringing whatever gives them the basis of their their, their troubling believers to end are we together I'm reminded of the scripture that says now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace always and by all means do you know what by all means means <laughs> now the Lord of peace himself give you peace how long always and by all means this is a very fearful statement when you really understand the revelation of this statement you'll be afraid of God when God says by all means find out how many means he has when the Bible says nothing shall by any means hurt you hallelujah oh you'll find rest this year in the name of Jesus when Jesus was born Herod heard that he was born and the spirit of the Antichrist moved through Herod to look for the location where Jesus was lying that he wanted to also come and worship but the intent was to kill him and the Bible says by a strategy of the spirit they took Jesus away and hid him for about two years and then when God had killed Herod it was an angel himself that came and said they that trouble the child are gone you can now live freely in the name of Jesus for some of you God has been hiding you from powers that would have destroyed you this year they will come to an end permanently your Bible says let God arise and let his enemies be scattered in the name of Jesus for your sake I'm saying it let God arise and let all his enemies over your life be scattered It is a season where God will judge the wicked. Psalm 92 verse 7. Let's hurry up. I want to speak over you. Psalm 92 and verse 7. Watch this. The Bible says, When the wicked spring as the grass, and when all the workers of iniquity do flourish, it is only so that they shall be destroyed forever. That means don't be afraid when it looks like the wicked are getting away with it. And you are saying, God, are you not aware? God is saying, I am the one setting things up. I, I will use that downfall as a statement that there is only one God that rules over the affairs of men. Keep that scripture again. This is in your Bible. When the wicked spring forth as grass and all the workers of iniquity do flourish, it is that they shall be destroyed forever. So while Pharaoh was making his boasting, I would destroy the nation of, each, of, of Israel and all the, with their chariots, he got angry when they left and he said pursue them. He did not know that it was the intelligence of God to drown them permanently in the sea. I'm saying it to anything that will not let you rest. May my God lay to rest this year. It is a season where God himself will judge and recompense the wicked and they that delight in evil against the saints number four in fact can I add one more scripture for you for number three <laughs> Psalm 34 and verse 21 
evil shall slay the wicked and they that hate the righteous shall be desolate this is not me oh. this is your bible that like Haman who has vowed that Mordecai will never rise like Haman who has vowed that God's covenant people would die while he was digging the pit he did not know he was digging how he would die while he was sleeping he was rehearsing how Mordecai would die and say the first thing I'll do is to kill Mordecai then kill Esther then kill the king I believe Mordecai's ultimate vision was to be king one day it was only a matter of time because when the king asked him what shall be done to the man who the king loves he started describing all the king's properties that means he had been looking at the horse the royal rope not knowing that he was digging a pit for himself every pit dug against you this year while they are done digging it they will fall into that same pit In the name of Jesus Amen. number four what is the implication of this prophetic word that this is a season where the prophet that comes with loving and serving Jesus will be on full display drawing many to Jesus let me take it again the fourth implication of this prophetic word is that this is a season or the season where the prophet that comes with loving and serving Jesus will be on full display. Don't forget this one. Serving Jesus pays. Loving Jesus pays. And this is the season where the prophet that comes with loving and serving Jesus will be on full display. Drawing many to Jesus. Isaiah 45 and verse 19. Let's look at Amplified. Isaiah 45 verse 19. I have not spoken in secret in the corner of the land of darkness. I did not call the descendants of Jacob to a fruitless service saying, seek me for nothing, but I promised them a just reward. I, the Lord, speak righteousness. The trust, trustworthy, straightforward correspondence between deeds and words. I declare the things that are right. You know what he's saying? KJV is where you get the word, I have not called the seed of Jacob. Yes. I said not to the seed of Jacob, seek me in vain. God never calls believers to seek him in vain. There is a reward. And this is the year that the prophet that comes with serving Jesus... The prophet that comes with loving Jesus will be on full display. I'm reminded of Exodus 23, 25 down to 28. And ye shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless your bread, he shall bless your water, and I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. There shall nothing cast her young nor be barren in thy land, the number of thy days I will fulfill. 27. I will send my fear before thee. And I will destroy all the people to whom thou shalt come. And I will make all thine enemies turn their backs unto you. Verse 28. And I will send hornets before thee. Which shall drive out the Hevites, the Canaanites, the Hittites. All from before thee. It pays to serve Jesus. It pays to love Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, please hear me. There are benefits to serving Jesus. Our ultimate motivation, I will repeat this for as long as I can. Our ultimate motivation behind loving and serving Jesus is that we truly love him for who he is. But I will emphasize for your learning that God will never call a people to serve him only because of love. He rewards. Are we together? He rewards. He rewards. I will never, never believe in a God who just says, come and serve me, come and worship me, and just do that. Don't mind what happens to you, whether you move. Now, I said that for a reason. Let me have your attention. I said that for a reason. If humans can be that thoughtful, 
even in the midst of such a sorrowful event, what kind of God was introduced to you that will allow you to serve him and be spent for him and there is no provision for your well-being? That is not the God we serve. If people can be that, you know, they can, they can sympathize with you knowing that people are coming for a burial and that they've traveled from far, others would have spent their time and their life and after everything, they now say, well, there is something for you to refresh you at least on your way going. You don't come for a serious meeting with the plan to eat. You come to discuss business. But somewhere in that in Nigeria, we call it item seven. Is it still item seven now? Well, for many people, it's now item 21. We full up all kinds of activities. And it's when you are spent that they now say there's food. But is it not amazing? Listen, that in all of our plannings, you are considered irresponsible in Africa if you ever call for any kind of responsible gathering and not factor in something to refresh people, at the very least, water. Not even poverty is an excuse for leaving people in that state. We are that educated to know that every time you gather people, even if the reason for gathering is not your fault, the fact that they are coming to you, the responsibility becomes on you to make sure they do not live the way they come. Ladies and gentlemen, let's respect God. This God you see is not a wicked God. This God you see is not a cruel and self-centered God. Instinctively, even culture and culture beyond the bounds of religion, every religion I know, in ways great and small, promote hospitality. You are commended when you are hospitable. It is the one factor that binds most cultures across the globe. I've traveled a bit and when I go to cultures, they try to show hospitality and honor in many ways. Sometimes they dress me, sometimes they give me their local food, they do whatever, they devise the skill to show you you are welcome. May God himself tell you thank you this year. You need to be a politician to understand what I just said. There are ways that once you come, especially politicians, after they greet you, say, well, uh, I have a little thank you somewhere, just a cup of water, and uh, please make sure you look at it. When men say thank you, you know what that means. Thank you can mean anything. Businessmen too can say, well, I just something small for the charge card. And for some, you open it and it will change your life immediately. <laughs> Am I right on that? Yeah. Every man blesses according to his riches. So when God tells you thank you, God does not consider himself too big to tell the saints thank you. It is clear in scripture that he commends people and he acknowledges the fact that he's touched and grateful for their commitment. When a rich man tells you thank you, thank you can mean go and carry that house. Thank you can mean take a car. Thank you can mean whatever you want. Thank you can mean sponsor your children. As men, as frail as we are, we have told certain people thank you and even in our own little capacity that thank you has meant something miraculous in their lives not to talk of God hallelujah I'm saying it again may you hear thank you from the master for someone thank you from God will mean you will never beg again for the rest of your life for someone, thank you from God will mean that cause of untimely death that kills people in your family on account of your loving him, he will cause it forever. Yeah. Hallelujah. These are the four implications of this prophetic word. Now listen very carefully. Let me tell you the truth. You have to believe that it is the will of God for you to experience exceeding great rewards. If you do not believe, you cannot receive even by faith because receiving 
is for believers. If I ask you to come and collect one million naira, you have to prove that you trust me by living where you are and coming where I am and then believing. You, you can't tell me where is it. I don't see it anywhere. I will tell you just go away because you don't believe. He that cometh to God must believe. Believe. When we call the sick to come out for instance, they come expecting to be healed so they can leave their seats, they can live outside wherever it is. When God calls you to come here, you come believing that he will change you. That is the kind of attitude you must have. That I believe. You, you have no idea how I've prayed this prophetic word in my life. If, if the prayer I've prayed, be it unto me, I repeat, be it unto me. This must be your first response. Be it unto me according to thy word. Be it unto me. Notice the angel never left until she gave a response. So God has brought you a word. He's waiting. What do you have to say about this? That I intend to lift you this year. What do you have to say about this? That I intend to anoint you like never before. That I intend to put your enemies to flight. That I intend to adorn you with such glory. That I intend to cause you to know me. That your life will speak my praises to the nations. And he's waiting. You can spend the whole year in argument. Or you can say like Mary, be it unto me. I beckon on you to join me in making this statement this night. Be it unto me. Everything you have said. This is a long version of the word amen. This is what amen means. Be it unto me. Let it happen in my life as you have desired. Let it happen in my life as you have spoken. Genesis 21, 1. And the Lord visited as you have spoken. Genesis 21, 1. And the Lord visited Sarah as he has said. And the Lord did unto Sarah as he has spoken. Let me read it properly. And the Lord visited Joshua Selman as he has said. And the Lord did unto Joshua Selman as he has spoken. Let me read it again. And the Lord visited Koinonia as he has said. And the Lord did unto Koinonia as he has spoken. You are not being childish. This is how it works in the kingdom. It says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Say so. Say so. Hallelujah. You must believe. This is your part to believe. What is your second part? Obtain grace to obey. Obtain grace to obey. Every promise of God, either written in scripture or that comes as a prophetic word, depends on your obedience. Hebrews 4, 1, 2, and 11. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 1, verse 2, and verse 11. Let me read. Let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us, of entering into his rest. Paul is speaking now. Any of you should seem to come short of it. Verse 2. The Bible says, For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Did you hear that? Not being mixed with faith. What is faith? Action. Obedience. So they heard a powerful prophetic word. And it did not profit them. Meaning it is possible that your January to December can be like every other year in spite of the prophetic word. It is possible, in fact, that your January to December can be the worst year yet for you. It depends on your obedience. James chapter 1. Okay, let's, let's, let's do verse 11. Hebrews chapter 4. Verse 11, he now leaves us with an instruction. Let us labor. How do you labor? In word and in doctrine. How do you labor? In obedience. Let us labor therefore to enter into that rest. Lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. James chapter 1 and verse 22. This is your part. This is my part. Let's read together. Ready? One to read. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. One more time, please. But be ye doers of the word 
and not hearers only. I hope you know that all through this discussion tonight, you have been hearing. And the Bible says, if you hear alone, you are deceiving your own self. Meaning you must obtain grace after this night. And that's why I'm about to speak to your life. Obtain grace that for everything you heard from the beginning of our discussion, be it unto me, be it unto me, be it unto me you have spoken it is my year of exceeding great rewards it is a year where you are rewarding my consistency and faithfulness i believe i believe i believe i believe it is a year where you are judging all kinds and forms of wickedness and mockery in my life i believe you are bringing shame and reproach to end i believe it is a year where my profiting for serving you becomes evident and visible to all and sundry i believe what is my own part? I believe you like Mary. Number two, I obtain grace that as instructions will keep coming here week after week, I will obey with childlike faith, expecting your word to work for me. Expecting your word to work for me. I expect the word of God to work in my life. Not as a man of God, as his son and as his child. I expect the word of God to work in this ministry. Why? because we are not rebellious to the laws of the Lord. The Bible says the law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. This year can become your best year ever through obedience and faith. Or this year, listen, the other side of all this encouragement, I'm telling you I'm not a prophet of doom. But remember, I brought a prophetic word here last year while I was teaching I shall not want about the things that I saw. You see, I love God and I don't have time coming to prophesy nonsense. It's, it's not, I don't, um, I respect God and I respect myself. I don't want to come and just talk rubbish when I come up here. But when God impresses upon my heart and I come up and declare to you and to the body of Christ that this is what I saw, God will always bring a way of escape. And the way of escape is what has come through this prophetic word. Let me tell you, without God and without the secrets of the kingdom, this year is going to be a very hard and terrible year for many people. From an economic standpoint, statistically speaking, economically speaking, politically speaking, and with the realities of the times, the Bible tells us wickedness will increase. Am I right on that? You don't need to be a prophet. It's in the Bible. Wars and rumors of wars. Our military people labor day and night. All the whole, you know, arms of the army, the air force, they are laboring right now to curb mayhem that is eating even into the state capital. So without the encouragement and the comfort that comes from God's word, this is a year to be afraid of. But the Bible says, thanks be to God, which causes us always. How does he cause us? By sending his word. This is how he causes us to triumph. He does not cause us to triumph by wishing and mesmerizing triumph. It does not happen that way. I have chosen my own possibility this year. I have chosen what must happen to me and what must not happen to me. I have chosen on your behalf under God, as far as Koinonia is concerned, what must happen to you and what must not happen to you. I have agreed with God prayer in the name of Jesus that if tears come out of your eyes this year, it must be tears of joy. Yeah. Believe it all so that you don't cry for nothing this year. In the name of Jesus, tears of joy. Yeah. Rejoicing this year. That people will look at you and say, come, come and show us how to serve God. Because there is something from your life. Your life is a demonstration that it pays to serve Jesus. This year, God will elevate supposedly nobodies. You will see people who have no comeliness. I'm telling you, ordinary people who, while they are testifying here, you will think they are lying. The lifting power of God. He reigns, he reigns, you 
are standing by my side to bring your word to pass he reigns he reigns oh my god he's an awesome god he reigns he reigns he's standing by your side to bring his word to pass This is what God wants to do. God wants to make a wonder out of our lives. God wants to make a name for himself in and through your life. And I tell you whether you are in the main auditorium or all the overflows down to the basement or outside or following online, it doesn't matter where you are. I want you to connect within the few minutes we have because I truly want to speak. It is the prophetic word that releases the grace the grace behind the speakings of God for us. There is a grace that God gives men for the sake of those he's sending you to. Let me show you a scripture. Ephesians 3 and verse 2. If ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, watch this, which is given me to you word, can we see that in Amplified if it gives us something different? The dispensation of the grace which is given me. Read it please. Ready? One to go. Assuming that you have heard of the stewardship of the grace, his unmerited favor that was entrusted to me. Watch this. To dispense to you for your benefit. The grace was given to me to dispense to you. I never end my retreat without receiving the grace that makes what God says come to pass. It will be a waste to just give you information that God has declared that this is your year and my year of exceeding great rewards. Backing that word must be a grace. Are you ready to receive? Please rise up on your feet. Rise up on your feet. You're going to pray for two minutes Please hold hands with someone by your left and right if you can. Except for those working, everyone should be making contact with someone. We are agreeing as a family of faith right now. Those outside, make sure you hold someone by your left and right. In the next one minute, we are going to pray as a global family. Be it unto us, Lord we believe. Be it unto us, everything you have said concerning 2024 from january till december we believe go ahead and pray you are holding the hands of someone we are engaging the weapon of unity and we are making faith declarations lord we believe over january over february over march over april over may june july august september october november december 2024 we agree there will be no death, no shame, no mockery. Outside, are you praying? Overflows, are you praying? Koinonia Global, pray. Body of Christ, those connected. This is not just for Koinonia. It is a reality that extends to the body of Christ. We can tap by faith with understanding. Hold the hands of someone make declarations of faith in the name of jesus in the mighty name of jesus we decree and declare be it unto us everything you have said be it unto us that this year the profit that comes from loving you from serving you will be evidence to all and sundry we believe Surprises by the Spirit. 
change of levels by the spirit mighty manifestations greater anointings by the spirit unctions by the spirit signs and wonders by the spirit extraordinary wealth and abundance by the spirit settlements of all kinds by the spirit testimonies by the spirit this we believe this we receive We believe. Praying one minute. Increases of every kind. In the name of Jesus. Spiritual growth. Increase. Breaking lips and bounds. By the Spirit of God. By the Spirit of grace. Yeshua Hamashiach Komina Nakane Yeshua Hamashiach Komina Nakane Yeshua Hamashiach Komina Nakane Yeshua Hamashiach Komina Nakane Yeshua Go ahead and pray. We hand over Koinonia. We hand over our Sound of Revival conferences. We hand over our global conference. We hand over every miracle service. We hand over our destinies, our health, our marriages, our finances, our children. We cannot fail. This year we experience elevations of that kind hand over your career hand over your spiritual life mother hand over your children they are safer with him than with you father hand over your family hand over your affairs don't hold it to yourself in pride you will lose and lose and lose again Hand over your business, hand over your company, hand over your job, preachers, hand over your ministry. Hand over your music ministry, hand over your apostolic ministry. Hand over the prophetic ministry. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Tonight in this place there are preachers. Great men and women, some of my dear wonderful people in ministry have come to worship with us tonight from far near in this place tonight there are businessmen in this place tonight there are career people both excelling and struggling in this place tonight there are family people trusting God for all kinds of testimonies or celebrating him in Thanksgiving in this place tonight there are students trusting God that he will write and rewrite their story in this place tonight, there are people enjoying health. In this place tonight, there are people struggling who came trusting Rafa to touch them. In this place tonight, there are people who have been marvelously helped of God financially. But there are people who are in financial pain. Pain that is worse than bodily infirmity. Limited. Some of them right now, after service, they do not even know how the week coming will be. In this place, there are people who have been in debt, threatened by all kinds of debt. Like the wife of the sons of the prophet. In this place, there are people who have enjoyed the arrival of children. In this place, there are others who have lost loved ones. 
can I tell you it doesn't matter what is around your life it is safer when you hand it over to God if it is pain still give it to him if it is your crown still give it to him hallelujah I was teaching over at the concert the worship concert in Zaria to wrap up last year and one of the things I taught them was the various templates of worship in the Bible there were various templates three of them number one Job Job lost everything and the Bible says he bowed himself and worship number two the woman with the alabaster box one of the synoptic accounts would tell us that that was a woman who was a harlot she had a terrible past a past that should not be desired by anyone so here on one side is a man who was once great and he went from grace to grass he lost everything and his response was worship here was a woman who had a terrible past that would not even want anybody to know her response with her alabaster box worship and then the Bible finally teaches us the worship in heaven, the four and twenty elders. These ones did not have scars, they only had crowns. And yet with their crowns, they still worshipped. So in the presence of worship, those who have lost, those who are in pains, and those who are enjoying victory, all bow to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. That must be your attitude this year. That while you are trusting God for the best, if you find yourself in the position of Job, your response, worship. You find yourself in the position of Mary with all kinds of negative things around your life, your position, worship. She started the worship with her tears and her hair. This woman was a very interesting woman because all of her worshipped. Her hair worshipped, her tears worshipped, her wealth worshipped. And then for the 20 and 4 elders, they drop their crowns. You don't receive crowns as a gift. It is a reward. And yet they laid it down. I'm giving you this as a prophetic instruction. Let there be nothing that happens to you this year that will make you call God unfaithful. You're, from now, you live rejoicing and say, Lord, you are faithful. If you find yourself as an elder with a crown on your head, receiving rewards like we expect, your response is worship. You find yourself with yesterday being painful and bitter for your family, for you. Just help those under the anointing. I see some people under the anointing. Your response is worship. You find yourself like Job. Perhaps last year it was great. Towards the end of last year, things just crashed down financially or otherwise. In any case, your response is worship. Let me speak over your life now. You don't have to kneel. Please stand. Father, in the name of Jesus, you have anointed us afresh for this season and for the sake of your people. In the name that is above all names, I decree and declare the grace that is behind this prophetic word, exceeding great rewards, may that grace from today begin to follow you. May that grace from today begin to follow you. Let it follow you in ministry. Let it follow you in business. Please hear me. In the name of Jesus, shame and reproach over your life. We preached on Ichabod last year. Whatever has made men to call you Ichabod, I declare like Rahab the prostitute, may God rewrite your story. Like Ruth in the Bible, may God rewrite your story. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you. Every long-standing testimony that you have trusted God for, let this be the year of speedy performance. The year of speedy performance. Let me prophesy in the name of Jesus. Let there be supernatural marriages this year. Supernatural marriages this year. Supernatural children this year. Supernatural jobs this year. Supernatural liftings this year. Supernatural restoration this year. Hear me? There are some of you here. Before we get to June, 
you will be so empowered, you will take care of your entire family as a single person. I say it again, my God will lift you and empower you. You will take care of everyone as a single person. There are ministries here who may be small in terms of impact, but in the name of Jesus, as this grace comes upon you, you will expand like the clouds in the sky. You will expand like the clouds in the sky. You will expand like the clouds in the sky. Can I pray for your finances? If you don't believe it, don't receive it. But if you believe it, in the name of Jesus, I pray for you this year. Between now, do you know, listen. Thank you, Jesus. I just remembered something while I was praying coming. I had in my spirit, after four months, then comes the harvest. I, I, I don't know how it escaped my mind. Hallelujah. You see, the, you see the, the benefit of the Holy Spirit. I think, I, I can't remember if I wrote it or not. I was praying just before I would come. I kept hearing it in my spirit. After four months, then comes the harvest. After four months, then comes the harvest. Whatever that means to you, I pray for you that in the name of Jesus, literally within four months and prophetically within four months, may your harvest be delivered to you. May your aparakas kote prekete balakatosia. May your harvest be delivered to you. After four months, then comes the harvest. Everything that has crippled you economically, tied your hands, tied the hands of your spouse. Receive this one, oh, tied the hands of your loved ones so that you cannot rise. Rent you cannot pay. You are building you cannot complete. Children cannot go to school. I pray for you. May my God who is Ebenezer arise and wipe that shame from your tears. Wipe that shame from your eyes. Wipe that shame from your life in the name of Jesus. I pray sincerely for any man of God here who has been struggling in ministry. You love Jesus with all your heart, but there are results you have desperately prayed that they happen. I pray for you. Between now and the next four months, may God surprise you. Everyone in business, hear me. I pray for you. This is your year. This is your year. This is your year. This is your year. I decree rise. I decree shine. Go and excel in business. In the name of Jesus. Now hear me. All blessings come from God through man to man. I want to pray for you. Perhaps God instructed certain people to look on you with kindness last year. But the devil manipulated them into forgetting you. And he made last year Mara a bitter experience. I'm praying this year, speedily they will turn to your attention. Speedily they will turn your direction. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now please hear me. Every time there is economic calamity, it is always connected with death. Go and read your Bible. Everywhere you see economic calamity, you will always see death connected to it. Let me pray and separate you early now from that demonic destructive spirit. I don't care what prophecy is flying around about death or otherwise. Koinonia Global, hear me. And believers, hear me. In the name of Jesus, as one sent of God and sent by God, this year you will not die. I say it again, this year you will not die. I shut the mouth of the grave concerning you. I shut the mouth of the grave concerning you. Every conspiracy by hell, whether in your place of work, to bring you down, to stop you from rising, so that your glory be turned to shame, the spirit behind it lives now. 
in the name of Jesus my final prayer for you listen carefully you see this thing we call anointing eh? is not oil oh. I hope you know that oil is only a representation because if you rub that oil on your head you will go and take your bath and you will clean it away are we together now anointing is not just oil it is an engracing from God that makes you command results only God can produce it is impossible to be anointed and produce results at a human frequency the assignment of the anointing is to elevate you to a realm of possibility where the result that comes from you it becomes clear and unmistakable that this is God walking through a man can I release that grace on you? The grace for extraordinary results. Results beyond human comprehension. Receive that anointing now. Receive that empowerment now. Receive that empowerment now. By reason of this prayer, I call you a sign and a wonder. I call you a sign and a wonder. In the name of Jesus Christ. So shall it be. So shall it be. Beginning from now. So shall it be. All through the 12 months of this year. In the name of Jesus. You will not fall. You will not fail. You will not falter. Anybody waiting for bad news from your end will wait forever. Did you hear what I said? Anybody waiting for bad news from your end will wait forever. As for you, the Lord is your portion. You will rise above your enemies. You will smite your enemies on the cheekbone. In the name of Jesus. Wave your hands together and give Jesus praise. It's a, it's, it's a wave offering. Wave your hands together. Give him praise. In the name of Jesus, the son of the living God. To you be all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Thanks for watching Revival Time Hub. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass, for he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was.